Hey guys, welcome back to my next Unity tutorial video. Uh, today, we're going to go ahead and make a game, uh, Pong. So, let's get started. Uh, first thing, I want you to open up your Unity and go into a project, a new project, and then when you set up a new project, it'll have a camera in it. So, I want you to go to your camera, and I want you to change its projection to orthogon orthographic and we're going to change the distance to 10 and the size to 10 and so it should look something like this alright and then we're going to go ahead and create a cube and position this at 0, 0, 0 and you can see now that it's within the camera's uh, box it's at the very back edge which is fine and then we're gonna scale this guy out a little bit 35 drag it up to the top and then copy it and say duplicate and that will make another cube right where that was and then drag it by the green arrow down to the bottom and should be about 8.5 and this one should be 10.5 that's fine should be 0 which then makes this guy 9 and this guy 9 okay it's always, it's always better to have everything uh, centered out because it makes uh, positioning things easier in the long run. So click on one of the cubes until you find the top cube, or the one, the one that's up here at the top of the uh, camera. We're going to name this the top wall. Then click on the other cube and we're going to name this the bottom wall. And that's pretty much everything that these walls have to do. Then I want you to go ahead and create a sphere and position this at zero, zero, zero. And this sphere is going to be our ball. And then I want you to create a capsule. And I want you to scale this to two. And I am position at zero, zero, zero. And then drag it to this side to 14. That's fine. And then call this the player. Copy this or duplicate it. Drag it to the other side at 14. Call this the enemy. And now where we're at is that we have a scene that's set up for our game of Pong. Alright, but right now it doesn't do anything. If you click the play button, nothing happens because we have to give these things some behaviors and some physics. So let's go ahead and start with the ball. You can go ahead and go to physics, rigid body, to attach a rigid body to it. Um, change the mass of the ball to 0 0.01. That, hmm, just point one. one. Okay. There we go. Zero point zero one. Um, get rid of the angular drag. So that to zero. And now, if you click play, this ball should fall and hit the bottom. It doesn't do any bouncing or anything like that. We're gonna have to add that in. Um, so Unity has some really cool stuff. And if you look over here, it says like non-physics materials. So we're going to go ahead and add some physics materials. So if you go to assets, uh, import package, physics materials, it will bring these in. Just click import and click on bouncy. So this is a physics material that mimics uh, bounciness. Set, and um, for this game you want to set the dynamic friction and static friction to zero because we don't want this ball to actually stop moving at any point. 
So now drag the bouncing material to the physics material spot over in the collider. And now if you click OK, the ball will bounce. And it doesn't look too bad. This game is very dark. So what we're going to do is go to edit, go all the way down to render settings, click that, and then go to ambient light, and drag that up. So now our game is fully lit. Alright, um, next thing we want to do is go ahead and create an empty object. Position this at 0, 0, 0. And this is mainly for to keep our hierarchy clean, this part, because it's getting a little messy. Um, call this uh, scenery. And then just drag the bottom wall into scenery, the top wall into scenery. And the game still plays exactly the same, nothing changes. This is just a way of grouping up some objects so that uh, it's easier to find other objects later on. Alright, so I'll uh, go to Assets, create a folder, and call it Resources. And then in Resources, we want to create another folder called Scripts. And we're going to go ahead and start modifying our behavior of objects. Um, so, the first thing we want to do is call a player script. And this is going to be for the player, right there. So you can drag a script and attach it to an object and you'll see that it gets added into it right over here. Um, when you actually add stuff to it you'll see the inspector will display some of the fields and values uh, from that script. So what, what do we need the player to do? Because we're going we're gonna to need it to go up and down and we're also going to need it to act with the colliders. So we're going to go ahead and add a phys uh, rigid body to this. Uh, only objects with the rigid bodies attached to them will actually uh, interact with the colliders. Um, so yeah, don't check off gravity. We're not going to use gravity in this game. And also, you want to freeze some of the positions on this. Actually, should be like this, because the only position you're moving in is in the y-axis. The other two are going to be locked so that you can't, so no amount of physical collisions will move us into those directions or cause our uh, paddle to spin. You can go ahead and click on the ball, and in the ball it's going to be pretty similar. It's not going to rotate, and you're not going to move in the z direction, but you'll move in the xy, which is this way and up, you know, horizontal and vertical. Okay, so that's okay. Our player now has a rigid body attached to it, so we'll interact with colliders. So now we need to go ahead and open up model develop and give this guy some behavior. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to assign some movement keys for him, and we're going to give him some velocity that allows him to move in those directions. Okay, this is a mono behavior script. It has starts out with two functions at the start and the update. Um, you can use start for initialization and update it is called every frame, and this is where the main update logic goes. So what we're gonna do is gonna give this guy public float speed. I'm just gonna set this to zero. And then we're gonna say if input dot get key and I'm going to use W for up and S or yeah W for up and S for down and if input dot get key dot S alright so now we just gotta actually do something in these functions um, transform is the the transform is this part and this has a translate function which translates a object to a, by a certain amount so like a certain distance from a vector 3 
So if you put 0, 0, 0, it'll translate no direction. But we already know the only direction we want to move is in the Y. So it's going to be 0, speed, speed, 0. And that should go up. And copy that and paste it. And then negative speed to go down. So if we save the script and we look at our player in the inspector, we'll see that there is a new field in the uh, the script, which is called speed. And from here you can actually set the value. So we're going to set it to five, and then you can click play. And you'll see that it kind of moves really fast. It's very jerky and a little, a little awful. So the way the way to fix that is to times this by time dot delta time which is just a way of saying that I want this to be in time with the game's frame rate so that gets rid of jerky behavior now if you look at it it's much smoother and it also hits the wall now see it's very nice alright so that's pretty much the player he doesn't really do too much other than this Thanks for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, click on any of the links on the screen to view our other videos and be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.